What is up, everyone? Welcome back to The Awakened Catholic Show. I am your host, Nick Della Torre, and this is not your grandmother's Catholic talk show. Today <laughs> I have with me Liv Harrison. Liv Harrison is sister in Christ, a sister content creator. She's she's doing stuff for the kingdom. She's uh, going to be hosting her own show on the radio pretty soon. Lots of cool stuff going on in her life. We're going to be hearing about it in just a second, and it might uh, make a difference for you. Coming right up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Awakened Catholic Show. Uh, gosh, I'm so excited, Liv, to have you here in the studio. This is so wild. Because it means I'm not at my house. <laughs> I know. And it is interesting, like, how the Lord works in mysterious ways. I know. Because, you know, like, recently, we were actually trying to record a virtual That's remote true. interview. We were. Um, so Liv lives, lives in Texas. I do. And which is not close to here. It's not close to here. I mean, <laughs> even within Texas, most things are not close to anything. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big state, It's Nick. a big state, yeah. So. So, uh, but you're far away. So we were going to yeah. do this virtual interview and, and Jesus said, no, Jesus said, no, <laughs> Jesus said, no, we had some technical issues that night. He knew better. He did know better. He, did, he knew this I, was yeah. going to happen. I, we did not. We, we literally didn't know this was going to happen to what? Maybe yesterday. Yeah, I mean, like seriously. 24 hours. So yeah. like, and that's where it's like, you know, kind of rad. Sometimes when things don't go the way you want them to. It's just trust. I feel like we've heard this before. I feel, hey. I feel like there's a book that we read that might have a couple of things like this in it. Hold on. It's the Bible. Yep. No, you're, you nailed it. That's the one. That's and the we're one. done. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Good show. We'll talk to you Come later. To Texas. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So uh, there you go. So I know it really is crazy because we really were supposed to. And I was bummed. Yeah. I was really bummed. I was like so sad because we became friends because of the pandemic, because mm -hmm. of the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, does anybody say internet anymore? Is that what the, kid, what uh, the kids No, I think say? they're saying the World Wide Web. Stop. <laughs> That's like when I used to type out like, you know, and I'd be like, WW, like, you don't, you don't have to do that yeah. anymore. And I'm yeah. like, okay. So anyway, on the uh, social media accounts that we all share, yes. uh, we met. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's actually, I mean, it's wild how that, uh, the, the pandemic, as, as much yeah. as a lot of people suffered and there was a lot of loss, like the world changed, not only for the worse, like yeah. a lot of really interesting things happened. Um, let, let's, let's table Wait. the, yeah, let's, let's hold on to the pandemic talk. Uh, cause we are <laughs> going to talk about the pandemic today and some of the ways that it actually affected Liv's life. Yeah. Um, and, and for the, for the better, uh, interestingly, some amazing things that happened in Liv's life, uh, be before we get any further. And got to let you know that if you enjoy the Awakened Catholic show or any of the shows here on Awakened Catholic, or you're just super stoked that Liv is here today, <laughs> uh, like, we don't even know if you're half is, as yes. stoked as I am, uh, no, seriously, if you if you love this stuff, if it's made an impact on your life whatsoever, I want to encourage you to be a part of what makes all of it possible. Um, so if you are interested in being a part of the Awakened Nation, which is a group of people that are in the family of Awakened Catholic and they, and they make monthly contributions, it's an automated thing, could be the price of a small cup of coffee or a big one uh, or a, a small one at Starbucks, which might be more like a bigger one. Anyways, whatever it is, um, if, if you are interested in helping us in this mission, please visit awakencatholic.org slash donate. Well, that's great because I can say I am not just a guest today, but I am part of the Awakened Nation. That's so true. So look at that. I'm not just paying my money where my tail is. I'm putting it where my mouth is. Is that a Texas and version I, of that? I don't know. Saying? I just made that. This is why I shouldn't be. They're like, why is she here? Well, I, so. I feel like I mess up saying this all the time because I'm Cuban. So I don't know. I use I, the excuse sure. that I English is my second first language, so I can pretty much say whatever I want. Texas, we just have our own language. So yeah. I just want to encourage everybody at home. Like, look, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I'm part of it. So what oh, are you doing? Yeah, live joined the Awakened Nation. But check out awakencatholic.org slash donate Perfect. to join the Awakened Nation like Liv did. I did. Uh, so let's Shall talk we? about the app. I would love to talk about the app. <laughs> I was hoping we were going to talk about the app. Well, you're in That's luck, Liv. Here. You're in luck, Liv, <laughs> because we're going to talk about the app. Listener, viewer, if you are sick and tired of a nausea-inducing social media experience and you want to be able to connect with people, you want to stay connected virtually um, and, and find the best place to consume Awakened Catholic content, you got to check out the Awakened Catholic app. There's also a, a growing library of great Catholic music on the app. There's a prayer library. Um, I, I think 
think one of the better rosary guides, you know, uh, oh. you know, a lot, of, a lot of the rosary guides and apps. I love how you kind of put that in there. You're like, I just want to put, I'm not going to name names. Yeah. I'm not going to name other apps, Yeah, I'm, but I they are inferior. I'm not going to call them out, but a lot of the other <laughs> apps that have rosary guides, they make you follow each prayer and click it. Like if you're not also not holding a physical. So, so basically if I wanted to pray the yeah. rosary with one of the other apps, yeah. I have to be holding the rosary in one hand and then I have to be like fingering the digital uh, Stop. This is 2021. Beads. We can't 20, do all that. Well, you we can't do that. do that. No, you know, sometimes, I don't want to do that. Sometimes the only prayer in the rosary <laughs> that you need some help with is the is the Nicene Creed. Or yes, the Apostles I was going to say, the, the first Creed. one, and you knew the name. Yeah. So I'm a legit the Catholic. First one. I don't know these things. <laughs> but sometimes the that's on all the you cross. want. The cross prayer. <laughs> the cross prayer. That's on there too. Sometimes all you need is the the glory be or the the Fatima prayer that we say after the glory be, and you don't want to have to go one. through the entire rosary worth of prayers reading through them when you no. already know the rest of them. Guess what? The Awakened Catholic app has got you covered. Check it out. The rosary got on the Awakened Catholic app. Man, I uh, did not. I never talk about the app this long <laughs> on these shows. But here so we I'm are. Here, so here I'm we here. are. Uh, yeah. So okay, and then. That is it. That's all I'm going to do okay, as far it. as that it's stuff. It's all plugging. <laughs> yeah. We're dying. We're uh, over awakening Catholics. Yes, we're we are leaving <laughs> this business right now. Uh Liv. Yeah, I'm okay. ready. You're awesome. Your husband, Nathan, is awesome. Yeah, you brought he's your here. Kids here. I did. Uh, what, a, what a joy to get to know you guys all, because uh, we had only ever at, interacted virtually. Yes, and, and a phone call or two, and yes, now we caravan true. from Texas for Just this to be moment. Here. They literally left their home in Texas forever. They sold everything <laughs> to be here at Awakening Catholic. I'm now part of Awakening Catholic. Yeah. No, it was, what, really what's funny is that we came two hours out of our way just to do this, to be really honest. I know, guys, I know. Viewers, it's true. Listeners, I hope that you're having an emotional reaction this to this moment. This is love, you guys. This wow. Is, you know, and maybe because of the pandemic and I haven't seen humans, but then we're going to put that aside. That's not why. <laughs> <laughs> How far no, would you go to see human beings? I mean, yeah. let's, I'm pretty extroverted. Um, so yeah, so we're on our way on a really long trip to New York City by way of Ohio. It makes no sense. Yeah, and you're making like four <laughs> other stops it's here really in Ohio. It's really dumb. It really is not an efficient trip at all. There's but, nothing dumb about it. Okay, thank you. You're, you're getting so, all the hot spots in Ohio. Yeah, we're seeing a bunch of people, so this is yeah. super fun. Uh -huh. So, so you're, you're hitting Cleveland, Columbus, Dayton, yeah. and Steubenville. Yes. And after, yesterday we were in St. Louis. Awaken. Yeah. Awaken came Little first. Rock. We've already seen people. Like, you're my third person. Yeah. Like, we're, like, hitting. We're, listen. In Texas, we declared the pandemic over when it started. So I'm just, like, <laughs> oh, catching up. And I'm like, uh, so we're going to see all the people now. So Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> got to do what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do. All right. So yeah. you're, you're headed to New York. And we're we actually going to get we're into the reason York. you're That's headed to New York uh, in, in the second segment of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right now, I'm curious. So you you've got uh, a website. Um, you, you're a speaker. You you have a podcast. You have a, a team of people you work with. You work with Edmund Mitchell and his team Ew. at Lazarus. Um, so talk to us about like who you are. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> Why do any of us want to stop? Oh my gosh. And Listen to her. She looks ninety. Well, I'll tell you, Nick. Um, thanks for asking. You do not. Look, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. In fact, when you told me that you and Nathan have been married for 21 years, it's like, what? How does someone... As embryos. We met as embryos. Oh, that yeah, makes more we high fived. That through... makes more sense. Uh huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I got no. It. So, yeah, I am. So, I, I listen, it's not, it's an interesting story. I got started in youth ministry. Like, who didn't, you know? Like, my first talk I gave, I was 13, literally started. And then um, I started emceeing things when I was 21. First time I got started on the radio, I was seven. Wow. So, I've done this like a really long time. First conference I wrote, I was 35. So now everyone's like, like, oh wow, she really is old. And um, <laughs> so, but now, yeah, that's what I do. I, I got started with a woman you might have heard of her. Some people, I don't know, y'all are young. Her name is Jennifer Fulweiler. Oh, absolutely. So Jen she's, got a, she's got a special on Amazon. I mean, she's one kind of, our, of a one big of our deal. Show hosts, uh, for Elevate Ordinary, uh, John Mark and Teresa Grodi, they actually received a, a little care package from Jennifer Fulweiler Same. to promote that Amazon special. Me, yeah, and I'm in it. You can see me. I I'm saw in the you. crowd. I did see. I was like, that's live. <laughs> I know. 50 pounds heavier, which I was like, listen, next time I have a friend that's going to do something cool and national, remind me to lose weight beforehand. I just want to say that. So That's always you, a good rule of thumb. I should have known. I should have yeah. stopped eating. Anyway, <laughs> so. Gosh, no. You do not promote. Eating we disorders. don't. That, that's that. Listen, obviously, I enjoy to eat. So, uh, no, I'm very pro eating. But yeah, so Jen is fantastic. She's the reason that I went public, to be honest. I was on her show. I, It was a fluke thing mm -hmm. that I got on her show. I thought she was a rando mom in a minivan with a podcast. I was very anti podcast. Which if, you, if you're a rando mom with a Nothing podcast with out that. of a minivan, we, we're all here for it. I know. That's what's yeah. so funny. I now have a podcast. So that's what's so funny. I was like,
like very anti podcast, and I was like so mean. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, totally. And and I was like, who's this lady? Like, why do I want to go in her podcast? And her that's weird. I'm gonna. So she was literally podcasting. Out no, of the van. she had her national radio show on Sirius XM. I didn't know that. I thought oh. she was just a rando mom <laughs> with a rando podcast, like every other mom. And I was like, who's this lady? And and when I showed up to do the show, it was at a conference that she threw with Hallie Lord called Adele. And I showed up early to be on her show, and I thought it was a podcast, and I didn't know what it was. And my girlfriend goes, so are you excited to be on national radio? And I was like, national radio? This is just a little podcast with oh some wa- wacky mom. And she was like, no, no. Mm-mm. And I opened the door, and there's 150 people in the audience. There's a stage oh with Jen Fulweiler and Hallie Lord. I had no idea who they were. No clue whatsoever. And uh, and she was like, you're about to be on national radio. And I was like, what? And she goes, this is Sirius XM. And so I called my mom. Oh, my goodness. And that is how I got broke into the business. That was is that hysterical. segment. Yeah, it was a 13-minute segment. And when we were finished, Jen took off her headphones, still didn't know who she was. I had no idea. And she looked at me and she goes, you're really good at this. And I was like, okay, lady. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. She's like, no, you're really great on live radio. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> no clue who she you was. Say that's all the guests. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Uh, lady. And I, like, walked off. And my friends were, like, freaking out because they're like, that was Jennifer Fulwell. I was like, uh, okay. And? Yeah, wow. And I had no idea. And then the next morning, I had an email from her producer. And then I became a regular on her show. So... So how did that initially happen if you didn't know her to begin with? (laughs) I bought a ticket to her conference. And I only went to her conference because all my friends were. They were all into the mommy blogging things, not my scene. So I didn't know who anybody was. And they were all like, we're going to go to Adele. All these famous bloggers are going to be there. And I was like, that sounds lame. All right, fine. I'll buy a ticket. Because everyone was going. I had FOMO. I was like, I don't want to be left out. No, you can't have FOMO. Yeah. So they were fangirling the whole time. And I'm walking up to all these famous people, bloggers. And I'm like, hey. And they're, and all my friends are like, oh my God, I can't believe you just talked to her. And I'm like, who is it? Like who? And they're like, that's blah, blah, blah. You know, like whoever it was, I had no clue. So the whole time I was just like networking wow. and connecting. That's so crazy. Had no clue. And you had no people. idea. No, I didn't and have a honestly, clue. I bet that I that's, loved it. that's a big part of probably why it went so well for you is because if yeah. you had known... I would have been the same, but but I think it I think it's a little endearing, you know, because yeah. it was like they I, I didn't fangirl. I wasn't like exactly. Yeah. So it was like it really it definitely was my it definitely was my end. So when it's I started so working crazy. with Jen, Jen was like, so you need a website. And I was like, why? For what? And she was like, because people need to find you. I was like, find me for what? I've been doing this stuff forever. And she's yeah. like, right. So I need you to listen. So, you know, she's the reason why I stepped into the public sphere. It will be three years on June 1st that I went public wow. as a public person. Yeah. Wow. And it's because of her. I That's got to give it up to her. Now I have my incredible. own show and life changed. But yeah, it was very organic, which is super cool. It sounds cool. like one of those super like cool. movies, like the rom-coms from back in the day, like when a date, for, <laughs> when a date with Tad Hamilton or something like that, where like you, you go on a date with a celebrity and then you become a celebrity. And like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or like, or I was walking in the mall and they were like, Oh, you should be a supermodel. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or just like that. <laughs> yeah. Or, or just like that. Same. In the, in the, you know, Sirius radio XM world. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. So yeah. So I got started on Sirius XM and, um, and then I auditioned to take over her spot when Jen left Sirius XM. She gave my name as the person to take over. I was her pick, and uh, they set me up, and they sent me the equipment. I went live in Houston in July of 2020. Didn't get the job. So nothing like auditioning in front of the nation. <laughs> hey, that's the way to go. And then not getting it, and you're like, yeah. well, everybody knows that I, I didn't steal that it. deal. Yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, I want everybody to know about each and every one of my failures. That would be, <laughs> that would be very humbling during know, a pandemic. It really helps you get into that narrow gate. Listen, uh, I have a really good therapist, yeah. and <laughs> she came in really handy after that because we were already thick in a pandemic. So yeah, yeah. it was mm. a tough time. It mm-hmm. was, it, but but it really happened for the best. And Jen was nothing but um, supportive and fantastic. And now I'm on this whole different road, and it's just really awesome. But wow, so she, yeah, so you. Is the content that you would have done with them Catholic in nature or just in some other? Yeah, it's, it was with the Catholic channels. Okay, so, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, 100%. Now, to be someone that is like in the public eye as a Catholic, like there's obviously this broad spectrum of, of ways that can look and, you know, uh, ways of communicating the faith or whatever. I'm curious, you know, being someone that has been put in those situations now, um, and now you have a show that you are going to be yeah. hosting and we'll talk about that in a little bit but like 
being that person, like, what's your what's your faith background? Like, how did you become a person that now yeah. might, it is going to be in the public eye that way? Yeah. No, well, I'm a cradle Catholic, which I used to be really embarrassed about. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because comforts are amazing. They're, like, so hardcore. And But I do have an interesting story of being a, a cradle Catholic where I knew my faith a lot of cradle Catholics don't. They're just like, my parents were really fantastic at explaining the why. And so I, I, yeah, and I went to like, I went to Medjugorje and it was Yugoslavia back in the day. Like, that's how old I am. <laughs> um, it's not Bosnia and I think Croatia. I don't know. I'm not, I mean, that geography's hard. Yes. So is it, was that right? I'm sure. Okay, great. Um, this is why I have Nathan, my husband. Yeah. He's the smart one. I'm the hot one. Nathan. Um, no, that's a joke. <laughs> Nathan, is that I right? I do not think I, yeah. Thumbs up <laughs> from Nathan. Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I went to Yugoslavia, Medjugorje when I was 10. Met Pope John Paul II with my husband. We of were course married you did. six months. We got blessed does. by him, right? Yeah. Um, so I've had some pretty profound, amazing things. And, and I did get started as a Catholic speaker, as a Catholic kid. Because my mom said to me, if you do not get involved in the youth group, we're moving churches. And I didn't want to leave the church I went to for very dumb reasons. Wow. Um, we had a better softball team. Ask me if I play softball. No. <laughs> but apparently that was really important that I went to the cool church. These are important things when you're 13. Now. Yeah, well, I went to the cool yeah. church that was good at softball. Yeah. This was important to my social well, and, life. You know, softball is a key component of, uh, you know, bringing people closer to Jesus. <laughs> right. So. right. It's, it's one of the books they took out. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I was like, oh, if I don't go to youth group, I can't go to the cool church. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, and then I got hooked on retreat ministry and I'm kind of a retreat junk. Jun like yeah, yeah, yeah. I've staffed over something like 270 retreats. Like I'm wow. legit serious. And wow. I, the first retreat I wrote, I was 18 and they're still doing it in Houston. So it's something that I love retreat ministry. I love relational ministry. And yeah. I really feel like starting in youth ministry, relational ministry, I went into college ministry, I went into young adult ministry, then I went into marriage ministry once I got married. I just think like there's, it's just such a fertile ground for dealing with human beings mm -hmm. because when you're working with teens, you don't bust out with, let's talk about how y'all all like are the worst <laughs> and how Jesus doesn't love your faces and you yeah. need to stop sinning. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work with no. a 16 year old. You start with I mean, that like. That really shouldn't work with anybody. Or any, but, but well, yeah. yeah, we'll get the, exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, but like, especially, you know, you know, to do that with teens and kids, you can't start with, right. and here's how you're a horrible person. Right. You start with, so who's your favorite Marvel character? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, what Star Wars did you like? You know, like yeah. whatever. And then you can bring up Jesus and yeah. Mary and whatever. Well, it's like that. It's like that uh, thing that has been said, you know, nobody, uh, nobody cares about what you love nobody what is the thing nobody cares about what you love unless they know you they you love them i'm totally it sounds really this. good i thought no I, no it's <laughs> not as good as the actual thing i promise um quote by pope john paul ii nobody no, nobody cares what you know unless Benedict. they know what you care i like that nobody cares what you know unless they know that you that care. Is that's Nick. the one mm -hmm. that sounds good we could put that on a pillow it, it might be <laughs> i'm pretty i read that in hobby lobby yes there you go, Nathan. Business idea. Let's talk about it. Yeah, nice. It's going to be on a shirt by the time we're done. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know what I mean? I think that that was the best breeding ground. Are we allowed to say that? I don't know. If that's. A, I mean, that sounds okay. Uh, to become a speaker, to become yeah. someone who does media, who becomes someone who does radio, to yeah. become someone who does podcasting, interviewer, like what I've gone into. Uh, you learn how to talk to people and not just the Catholic stuff, right? Not mm -hmm. just the theology, but like, I want to know your story. Yeah. I want to connect with you as a person. Yeah. And when you learn how to do that in youth ministry and relational ministry, it's just like, I mean, that's, that's how you evangelize, right? So taking it to yeah. an adult audience was just a really, it was an easy segue. And that's actually exactly why we've formatted this particular show on Awakened Catholic, the definitive Awakened Catholic show. Uh, that's why we formatted it this way, where the first half, the first segment is about who is the person. Right. Um, because, you know, whatever it is you might have to say is going to have a totally different impact uh, and meaning to the viewer or the listener when they understand who you are. Right. Because our stories uh, make us who we are. I mean, yeah, well, you have to have the buy in. Right. And yeah. like as humans and as we have kind of separated so much, not just because of the pandemic, but because of I mean, we like to say like how modern everything is. But, you know, I think all the time, like back to like Little House on the Prairie and I'm like, you know, they didn't have a dishwasher or a washing machine. And I have those. Not that I use them, but I have them. They're there. 
But they were out in the village, man. They were like hanging yeah. out, washing together and, you know, mm-hmm. all day living together. And what have we saved all this time for? Yeah, my dishes are done in half an hour, but what am I doing? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like I'm out there doing things with humans. Right. I'm out there doing like, I don't, scrolling on the internet, you know, yeah. like it's not like it gave me more time with actual human beings. Yeah. We've lost actual time with human beings. So connecting again, one-on-one and especially mm-hmm. in person yeah. is just so fantastic. I think it's that. And it's also like, when you're washing the dishes and you're standing there for, I don't know how long, you know, if you're doing like a yeah, full I don't, meal. How long does it take to wash? We should ask Nathan. He washes <laughs> our dishes. It's not like we're in the Stone Ages. Uh, Nathan, give us the time frame. <laughs> I know. I'm the worst. I don't no, know. But like, let's say you're, you're washing dishes after a full family meal yeah. and you're standing there and you you have an opportunity to just think. Like your world yeah. stops. Your world slows down. And you can just process and so reflect. And it, it happens involuntarily. Like you don't have a choice unless you're standing there watching with someone and you're talking. But then even then it's a connection point. Yeah. So it's almost like all this incredible technology and efficiency has uh, made it harder for us to be mm-hmm. uh, introspective. And it's made it harder for us to be extrospective, to, to use connect. a word that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, that's a good word. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I vote yes. There it so, is. There you go. So, you know, uh, yeah. Toss out your washing machines, people. <laughs> so that's why you should all want to get to know me. No, it's mm-hmm. like that. They're like, no, we still actually don't understand. You've told us nothing, <laughs> actually. We have learned zero. <laughs> so, so the story begins in Louisiana. <laughs> it does. <laughs> You're really like, and that was the no, first No, 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 no. I actually think it's great. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm from Louisiana. I'm Cajun. But my dad is 100% Italian from New Jersey. And I have, I don't know if you ever grew up watching the movie Grease. Yeah. But my dad is kind of like Danny Zuko and my mom is like Sandy. Like my dad went to Woodstock, was a hippie, was at Woodstock. Okay. And my mom was homecoming queen, legit. And they're like so opposite. And those were my parents. So, um, that's awesome. Right. So I grew up in a truck stop in Louisiana with truckers. And I was the water menu girl. And my first job, water menu, water. My like, my job was to greet the truckers and say hi. I'm I'm Olivia. I was seven. I had a little tip jar. Which pH balance and, do you want in your water? <laughs> well, it was Louisiana. We didn't know. No, I just mean and like, I'd sit them down at the booth and I give them their menus and I pour water and oh, I give them their water. So it's not I was a, a water menu, menu girl. Waters. No, I gave it's, them their menu and their got water. It. Okay. And that was it. I that was makes done. way more sense than what I was assuming. I was the water menu girl. Yeah, that's wow. it. So there so you go. You, start, start with truckers. You were doing that for that was your first job. That was my first job. I got a paycheck Okay, at seven, wow. you know, like there you go. And my dad also owned a BF Goodrich tire store. Yeah. And that's how I had my first radio gig. He started, um, there was one, they did a big promotion, uh, like a big, like all day kind of like come out to our, you know, BF Goodrich, da, 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 da. we have prizes, we have pizza and hot dogs, whatever kind of a thing. And I got to do the radio segments, you know, like in a cute little that's seven year old awesome. voice. Yeah, I got so to you- be like, come to my dad's. Tire store. So you got a lot of experience <laughs> talking to people and engaging with people, making yes. them feel good uh, by working the the water menu girl. That's thing. where I learned I could tell stories. Literally, was telling stories to truckers. Wow. That was literally how I learned that what storytelling was and how powerful it was and how I could capture that I had a gift of capturing an audience mm. and and what that looked like. And I would make them laugh and I would like whatever. And that is where I, that is literally where I learned how to tell stories. Wow, that's so and cool. And talk. And, and then engage. you got behind a microphone for the first time for the radio gig. Yeah, well, yeah, when I was, yeah, when he, the BF Goodrich thing was after that. Yeah. That was like, they told me what to say. But then I was, I kind of became the kid and in uh, in my small town in Louisiana, where we would have like the whole town would come whenever mm-hmm. like the third grade did a play because mm-hmm. it's that small of a town, you know. <laughs> and I was always they'd be like, "Hey, Liv, so could you be the narrator or could you be the MC?" Oh, wow. And so I was always the kid, even though it was like in third grade, mm-hmm. and it might have been like the fifth grade show. I'm like, "Hi, I'm Olivia Ann Selmy. Welcome to Weaver Elementary." Like I always was the one on stage yeah. welcoming with that personality. So you just got so and comfortable. In front of crowds and they loved it the yeah. principal loved it my teacher so they saw that in me as a kid mm-hmm. that was always my role i was always at the front of the stage yeah. with a microphone with a script i could ad lib i could and that's a huge totally yeah, absolutely yeah. so i loved it and, and so what a cool thing so you were brought up um you know, in this uh, truck stop environment, <laughs> yeah. you're you're working at the truck stop, <laughs> serving water and menus, yeah, not we're... menus of water. Uh, and then you're you're kind of becoming this town MC, like the official yeah. voice of your of my elementary school, in y'all. Louisiana. Yeah, and so and and then on top of all that, you mentioned that. Uh, your parents did such a good job of forming you in the faith, mm-hmm. like teaching you the why behind the what. 
That by itself, that's super rare. Yeah, no, uh, it was super cool. And they were really cool because my school, I, I was in northern Louisiana, so Natchitoches. And sorry, everybody what? has, it's called Natchitoches. Oh, I know. God bless you. And, I know, right? <laughs> and if anybody has seen Still Magnolias with Julia Roberts, that's my hometown. But what was cool was that it, it's a, my school was predominantly black. And so here I am in the early 80s, and my parents chose to keep me in the public school so that I wasn't surrounded by just kids that looked like me because wow. white kids at my school, I mean, at my in my town in North Louisiana, they could afford to go to St. Mary's, which was the Catholic school, the private Catholic school. And my parents made a conscious decision not to do that. Even though they could afford it, they wanted me to have a different experience. So there were often times I was the only white girl in my class. And that's not a normal experience as a white child growing up in the yeah. South, you know, yeah. like, um, and I, I, I love that they made that like intentional choice. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had a very different culturally like experience that I didn't realize was happening until I moved to Houston. And then I was like, where are all these white people? Like who, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, why does everyone look like me? This is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that was kind of like this my is experience, the worst. Uh, Cause I went to, Catholic, not, not related to race, but related to faith. Like I went to Catholic school K through eight. And then I went to a public high school and it was like, wait, not everybody's Catholic. Right? Where's Mary? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's that guy that's always on that cross? Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it was, it was interesting. It was really great. And so, yeah, I definitely, was like one of the only well i don't even know if we talked about faith in louisiana louisiana we just talk about crawfish i'm just kidding not really it's good food similarly it's good important food. It, it's about as i mean gumbo is pretty important there yeah, mardi gras yeah. is pretty important there we shut down schools for a week for mardi gras so no way. yeah we do i we remember mardi gras do. day was always fun at my no, school we do a week that's like incredible. it is legit i was i was mardi gras queen of my kindergarten class thank you very much well, I had a you crown be. there you go and a cape and i was in the parade <laughs> See, it's a different, it's like a different culture I down just in Louisiana. Visit. Louisiana is fantastic. That great food, wild. great people. It's like another country. It really is. It's very, it's just fantastic. Yeah. And and I, I loved it. And, and starting there, I grew up on three acres of land and mm. with the truckers and all this kind of, it was just a really cool childhood. Really fantastic. And then I moved to the big city. <laughs> it's like in Hallmark and movie, you know, and then it all just, yeah. man, I was not. <laughs> top dog anymore oh, you know what man, i mean yeah. nobody knew i had any gifts they were like could you stop talking you know yeah, and, yeah. and um and like i said it was a much bigger everything was bigger and mm -hmm. everything's bigger in texas so. yeah sure and i uh had a little bit of a weight problem which is a big part of my story i was an obese child and the first time my parents took me to weight watchers i was eight so even Louisiana, yeah. I, you know, really suffered from that. But when I moved to Houston and here I am, 10 years old, fifth grade, leaving everything I know, no one looks the way that I remember mm -hmm. and it's not small and comfortable. And yeah, being Catholic, yeah, I mean, like it's huge. Like yeah. there's a lot of people in Houston. I raised Catholic and here I am really not just chubby y'all. I mean, like, I mean, obese coming into a new school, that was a game changer. The episode um, on your podcast yeah. where you share about that story, yeah, um, I got really emotional. Aww. It was so touching. Um, and you were so honest. And it was, um, it was challenging to hear because it's so easy. Like I've talked about on this show and other episodes, it's so easy to like want to avoid thinking about things that are uncomfortable or that are sad mm -hmm. and it was just so raw and i thought that that type of honesty gosh if we if we saw more of that you know and, and gave people room to feel like oh i'm not weird for these experiences mm. you know like um yeah i just I, I just i highly recommend we'll put a link in the in the show notes for this episode to that episode on on lives Podcast. It's a tough one. It it's, is. It, it's a tough. It's a tough. It's a tough episode. But it's powerful. It's so Thank powerful, you. and you give so much of the the background and, and the story, and and it is like you said, you're a great storyteller, and it was <laughs> it was a very well told story. Oh, I told Alina you. after I listened to it, I was like, gosh, I almost like cried three times, oh. and I don't get emotional. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's one of my Thank coping you. mechanisms from my childhood trauma. So like, <laughs> I, <laughs> great. I'm glad we're here. Yeah, let's talk about childhood trauma. Uh, no, but yeah, just um, oh, I, thanks, I highly Nick. recommend that, and and I I think I even texted you after I listened to it just. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Thank um, you. Thank you. Well, and I, you know, it's funny and I didn't think about this connection. I actually was never comfortable talking about my weight until, uh, 
an episode I was taping with Jen Fulweiler. Actually, it wasn't taping. We did everything live. And she broadcast from Austin. So I would drive to Austin. It's about two hours from Houston. And we would be in the studio together. Um, and it was April of, what, 2019, I believe. Uh, and I went on the air and I told my story and said how much I weighed the heaviest I ever was, which was 458 pounds. And I told that story for the first time publicly. I left Jen's studio, went to a Catholic church and broke down and I posted a photo and there's a great Catholic speaker in front of mine who's an author, um, who's now a really good friend of mine, Mary Lindenberg. I don't know if you know Mary. No. And she texted, she called me and said, because she's been doing this a lot longer publicly than me. And she was like, friend, what you just had was, um, what did she call it? She said emotional, she said a word for it. She had a term and she said, you shared so, something so vulnerable and so, because I was just like losing it, Nick. Like I was like, I mean, it was like a, a wow. purging. It was almost like, you know what I mean? It was like a detox because wow, I never yeah. said those words. I was morbidly obese. I weighed 458 pounds. Like as a woman to say that, you know? <laughs> yeah. And on a national, it was just, I couldn't, I, I collapsed. I emotionally collapsed after that show. Wow. But then I could talk about it. Yeah. And so it's almost like, it's not even just the vulnerability of being honest with the audience. Mm -hmm. A lot of that's being honest with yourself. That's exactly that's, right. And that's the hardest part. Exactly. Because you that's can like so right. hide behind these things as long as you don't externalize it. Like I don't have to remind myself that I'm X, Y, and Z or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah that's, that's so huge. Um, I'm going to take a quick detour, yeah. quick detour. I'm gonna. We're gonna jump into the charisma speed round. Oh, are you ready? Look at that fancy Catholic word, charisma. <laughs> I was a theology major for a semester. I'm ready. I'm ready. Don't All ask right. me what it means, but I know it's like something after things. Yep. Go ahead. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So the charisma speed round. Question number one oh, God. is: Yeah, who is Jesus to you? Oh, Jesus. Oh, jeez. Oh, us. Okay, Jesus. Yeah, that was cute. I see, <laughs> see, I see, what, I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? Can I tell you something really fascinating? Do. Jesus is the absolute hardest part of the Trinity for me, which really? I find fascinating because most people, he's the easiest. He's yeah. the most tangible. Uh, I really connect with the Holy Spirit. That oh, is wow. my, he's my guy. That's awesome. But I live in wonder and awe and I have the gift of like childlike faith. That's mm. not hard for me. Jesus is difficult for me and he always has been. So we have a really good relationship now. Now we do. Obviously, that was on my side, you guys, because like he, he's been fine the whole time. <laughs> he wasn't picking up my calls. <laughs> he's like he was amazing. Me. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. Uh, but now, now I really like. I can't. I can't get to the point. I'd love to sit here and be like, Jesus is my best friend. Jesus is whatever. But I really feel like if I were to say, if I were to classify who he is to me, I feel like I could at this point look at you in the face and say. Jesus is someone that I absolutely believes in me, sees me, mm. hears me, and understands me, and absolutely accepts me. Wow. And so that I can say today. And that's it took beautiful. me a long time to get there. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Yeah. How would you answer that question about the Holy Spirit then? Oh, he's my boy. <laughs> my boy. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, it's like... <laughs> <sighs> he is my oh boy. he is my bestie. I get him. I can we lower just, the lights in here? I mean, this, seriously, yeah. people are like, does she need a fan? Get some slow um, jams. Yeah, seriously. No, I just I appreciate him on every single level. I I get him and I want to be him. Mm -hmm. I love that he can be a soft whisper, which I have no capacity <laughs> of being. And I love that he can be a loud like wind. Uh -huh. But I also love that he doesn't need. I used to. I now do this analogy. I I, I uh, modernized it because I used to do it about the Jackson Five, but nobody knows who that is because this is not eighteen twelve anymore. Okay, I, I know who the Jackson okay, Five you're are. adorable. <laughs> um, that's really cute. <laughs> but now I do it about the Jonas Brothers. There's a better chance. Who's that? I'm, okay, I'm that's a, that's <laughs> right. Exactly. Who but I also feel like comparing them. To the Trinity. Are you ready? Oh, oh okay. I I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So there's it. there's Joe Jonas. Okay. He's hot. Um, there's <laughs> Nick Jonas, also hot. And then there's Kevin Jonas. And everybody's like, uh. So, like, I feel Is like. Nathan out of the room? Were you he's feel, right. feel he, good listen, about what's happening here? Not his first word. He met me as a teenager. He knew what he was getting. <laughs> He's in, uh, we've been married a long You're time. You're such a good guy, Nathan. He can't, he really is a saint. Everybody, right, Nathan for sainthood. Um, so like Joe and Nick, it's like God, the father and Jesus Christ. Like you get it. They're like loud. They're out there. Like, God, you know, God, the father's, you hear a lot about him in the old Testament. You're like, oh, okay. He's important. Uh -huh. Jesus comes out. He's like, oh, he has sandals. Like he seems important. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, we're going to leave this other guy. You know, like, oh, that guy, you know, whatever. Okay. 
whatever. And you're like, oh, okay. Like, nobody, like, pays attention to him. And I'm like, that's Kevin Jonas, y'all. Mm-hmm. Like, Kevin Jonas doesn't get any love. Like, if Kevin Jonas gotcha. came to a mall, no one would come. Uh, They'd be like, where's Nick and like, Joe? Uh, in uh, sync, basically yeah. anyone in the band other than Justin Timberlake. Then JT, yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> <laughs> basically, yeah. yes, but it works because of the three. Yeah, and I got so, you. but I, I love, I love that Kevin Jonas is the one that's been married the longest. He mm. waited for his wife for marriage. Cool. He's a really good family man. You know what I mean? Like yeah, he's yeah. got it together. I love that the Holy Spirit doesn't have to be like da da. You know, like if I had been part of the Trinity, if they had asked me. <laughs> I definitely would have been Jesus. I've been like, dude, that's the guy that's gonna walk on water. I'm in. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I'll be that guy. And then they'll be like, but then at the end, I'll be like, no, no, I'm, a, I'm, yeah, you no, know, I don't want to do that part. Yeah. But the, the cool, like talking to five thousand, put me in. Mm-hmm. But when they would explain the Holy Spirit part of like, look, you're not gonna get a lot of FaceTime. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're not gonna, we're gonna you kind of look like a dove. Um, yeah. Maybe you come as fire. <laughs> I, I would be yeah. like. I don't want to be that guy, you right. know, like that's not, but he love, I love that about him. I love that he's here on this planet right now and we don't talk about it. Mm. He doesn't need it. I love that he's that cool yeah. and that like yeah. confident that's and so he's here, man. And we yeah. love to think like, oh, we just got abandoned. Yeah. You know, there was God, the father, he was loud. There was Jesus. He was pretty amazing. But, uh, we have no one. And I'm like, dude, yeah. he's been here the longest. Yeah. Like he's so, and he's the same one that was there when it all started. Mm-hmm. Same Holy Spirit that was blown into, you know, Adam and the same Holy Spirit that Jesus, I mean, like. I, I love that we don't get mm-hmm. how amazing he is and that so that is not a problem for him. I find that fascinating. Yeah. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. I thank actually you. Agree. I just love this guy. I totally agree. And I feel like, <laughs> gosh, talk about the most underrated member of the Trinity. That's what I mean. He's the Kevin Jonas yeah, and, of the Trinity. And it's like I, <laughs> No even, one has his poster. Even no, I, I, I want let's make that a poster. <laughs> Nathan, write that down. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like I think about even uh, in Christian circles that are super Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit oriented, um, you know, whether it's like evangel- evangelicals, Pentecostals, like you still also when it's when the Holy Spirit's being referred to, it isn't as much of an emphasis about the person of the Holy Spirit, but rather it's almost like it's the spirit of God. Like it's almost yeah, like it's this, a leftover. Yeah. Yeah. Not guys. He's exa- he is he is equal. Right. He is he's the same as you like, Trinity. and I don't yeah. think we get, I really yeah. don't. And I don't think if I gives him, I'm so with you on that. No yeah. one gives him enough credit. And, and then you look at both biblically and historically outside of the Bible accounts, like, um, but, but biblically even into the old Testament, there's so much like it is dense with, powerful stories about the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Even like Genesis chapter one and the, the spirit of the, the Lord, the, the, yeah. the spirit of the Gord. What is that? <laughs> the spirit of the Lord, God, not Gord. Um, <clears throat> I, I host a show. Um, <laughs> I love it. The spirit of the Lord, you know, was resting uh, above uh, upon the water or whatever. And uh, I'm misquoting that. I'm sure. No, but, it sounds good. Uh, but like, then you get some, to some powerful stuff like uh, David before he slew Goliath. The priest of the Lord, Samuel, anoints him with oil, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, a a pre, uh, a a type of what we would see, a foreshadowing of what we would see with the sacrament of uh, confirmation. Samuel anoints him with oil, and then the spirit of the Lord rushed mightily upon David. And there was another instance a few chapters earlier where the same thing happened to someone else. And it's like, and then he goes and slays Goliath. Yeah. And um, and, and then there's there's just so much. There's so he, much like he that. He just does it. I just find it really fascinating that he does not get the credit that yeah. is deserved to him and yeah. that he's still here now. Like, that's what I really think we don't grasp. Yeah. Like Jesus said, guys, I'm leaving someone behind. And we're all Peter about it. We're like, I don't, I don't really get what you're saying. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, I'm going to go through this again. I'm going to leave <laughs> someone behind. Yeah. And we do not tap into that yeah. and i find that mind-boggling because i like what you're saying i know we don't get the power that mm-hmm. he has and he has literally been there from the beginning yeah and i just think we're so blessed that to be chosen to live in this time mm. if you tap into it and you get it i just think like you got to be joking like the yeah. holy spirit is where it's at that's awesome and we were left that for now and so he's my guy i get it i love it I love it. But I wouldn't have been him. <laughs> <laughs> I'd want my face on a on a on a bus. <laughs> yeah. Not uh, the Holy Spirit. He's okay being in the back. So, okay. Awesome. Uh back to the curriculum speed round. <laughs> Question that was not speedy at all. No. Oh, well, no. I, I'm the worst. I, in all fairness, I'm the one that asked, like, okay, okay I would sorry. About the Holy Spirit. I'll be fast. No, no, no. Mother okay. Teresa. No, fault. I'm just kidding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JP2. <laughs> Next one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Second question is. Okay. What's your elevator pitch for a life with Jesus? 
Uh, listen, I mean, it's not going to be that great except to say I don't know how else to do it. I really don't. My life has been such a cluster, and we'll stop that. <laughs> This is a good show. This is a, a Catholic. Clock. This is yeah. This is a, this is a Catholic show. Everybody. Yeah. Um. It it really has been, and I there is no reason on the planet, and I'm not saying this in a roundabout way. I'm saying in the way that you're going to take it. There's no reason on the planet I should be alive today, mm. literally, if I did not have the faith in the relationship with Jesus Christ. Done. Period. I don't know how else to do it. I really don't. I don't know how else you survive wow. because I've lived a lot of life that most people have not. And I could not have done it without him. I, and I mean it in every sense of the word, because I am so <laughs> nothing, nothing. And so anything that is supernatural comes from God mm. and his, I mean, like seriously, Jesus Christ is nothing but supernatural and he has saved me wow. in every possible way. Yeah. I mean it. That's beautiful. It's true. I don't know how else, how else. That's not really good elevator pitch, except I don't know what you're doing with your I life. Think, no, I think that actually that's a great elevator pitch. Like literally, I would be dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we're not. Don't want else to do. Yeah. And we're um, done. Okay. Third and final question of the curriculum speed round. Ooh, okay. Elevator pitch specifically for life as a Catholic. It's It's the most direct route. You know, it's like GPS. I am not a organized person. I don't know how spreadsheets work. I don't know how money works. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to fold laundry. I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't know, Nick, which is why I married my husband, Nathan. He's the complete opposite, and he's a real adult, and he's fantastic. <laughs> so I love Catholicism because it's like, hey, person, mm. <laughs> whether you're Nathan and you're amazing or you're Liv and you're a mess, here's the here's the way to do it. Here's the way to get there. Mm -hmm. Great. It's like done. It's like GPS. It's the, it's the, yeah, there's alternate routes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you can shoot, but this guy's going to take an hour longer mm -hmm. and this guy, well, you might run into traffic, mm -hmm. but this guy, you're going to get there and we know you're going to get there. That's how I feel about the, like, I know, like, all right, fine. I'm going to get there because the Catholic church, it's That's a done beautiful. deal. I love Does that. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. It's my GPS. Uh, that was, Google maps. You killed it. That was a great, <laughs> that was a great Christmas speed round. They're like, please don't speak theology. She is saying <laughs> no. nothing. <laughs> no, honestly, that's all beautiful. Super, super cool. So Liv, uh, yeah. let's pick up where we left off. You moved to Texas. You don't know anybody. Nobody knows you. You had been this town phenomenon. <laughs> Hosting the town shut down because of me. Yeah, stuff, uh -huh. uh, you know, telling stories at the truck stop. All right, we might have embellished uh, a little bit. No, no, the whole no, town's gonna be no. like, Wait, who is no, that? If we you go there this. today, they actually have. It's true. It's named after her now. It's, you won't find it by the it's previous true. name. Olivia Nakedish. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's how you say it? Uh, all right, so so you moved to Texas. It's uh, you know you're a stranger in a foreign land, and <laughs> um, and then you also mentioned that you were starting more and more to struggle with your weight. Yeah. Um, so bring bring us back. Where are we at here? Yeah. So it what? Yeah. I I really freaked out. It was a big culture shock because I went from three and a half acres, total country life, to a neighborhood where before there was HP computers, this is really going to show my age and yours, there was Compaq computers. Have I remember. Compaq? That was my first family computer. Okay. Now I'm going to blow your mind. The five founders of Compaq lived in my neighborhood. Oh my god! That's how much we changed our lives. Does oh that make gosh. sense? Yeah. Wow. So now all of a sudden we were in a very different. There were no truckers. There was no. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like there was you. no. Yeah. And okay. they didn't want your stories. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this was a different clientele. Yeah. <laughs> this is a different culture, and I didn't. And I had a very thick Louisiana accent. I mean, thick. Okay. And uh, so yeah, I didn't quite fit in, and my weight definitely became somewhere that I could just really go and settle into. Wow. I could okay. lean into that. And I definitely self-medicated. I mean, I was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that was something I could control. And as I shared on the podcast, you know, if people want to listen or whatever, I talk about how that happened and what I did to continue to put on weight. When I went into junior high, which in, in uh, Texas is sixth through eighth grade, my mom started picking me up from school early, which there's nothing more lame than when you're, you know, junior high is the worst, right? It's like you're already trying to just survive being 12. But my mom would pick me up early twice a week to drive me downtown to Houston, you know, to downtown Houston, which was like 40 minutes away, 45 minutes away to meet with a nutritionist to teach me how to eat. So I was going to like a hospital and stuff to learn. Like this was like not just like, oh, she's just a chubby kid that like we're talking like we're talking like big problems. Like here. we're concerned medically. Like, exactly. Yeah. This this is a medical thing. Um, 
it just continued. I was absolutely the biggest school in my high school. My high school had 5,000 students in it. 5,000. So I had like 980 or something in my graduating class. I think we ended up with like 930, you know, because people drop. Yeah. Don't stay in school, guys. Stay in school. Don't stay in school? No, no. Stay in school. Oh, don't okay. drop out. You're right. I didn't finish. <laughs> okay, let me try that again. Ready? Don't drop out. Stay in school. But um, so over 900 kids in my graduating class, and I was... The fattest girl in my class. I mean, I was almost 300 pounds when I graduated high school. I was in the high 280s. And, um, but I was, I was very accepted at my high school. I had a very different experience than most morbidly obese mm -hmm. girls, especially. Well, and I, I wonder weird. if there's also fewer people that struggle with weight, weight to that degree that, um, fewer people that have the personality that you have that like carries a room and, <laughs> I, yeah, I, listen, I, I have to say, I, it's, it's hard to know. Did the personality become like develop because of the weight? Okay. I'm in a little bit of an identity crisis, to be honest with you, really and truly, because I, I do not weigh what I did. And, and it, it definitely is an identity crisis to be like, wait a second, when am I without being morbidly obese? You know, mm -hmm. did I develop this persona hmm. as a defense mechanism? Wow, that's or, so interesting. Right. Or again, I have a good therapist. Or um, <laughs> <laughs> are these the gifts that God gave me and it was going to come out no matter what was around it, you know? Yeah. But it definitely, I developed a, a boundary. I had a physical boundary that protected me. It My weight served me for a long time and mm. I didn't understand that. And it really did. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a skin protection boundary, you know? I used to call it my safety suit mm. because it was. And it kept people and experiences at a distance that I didn't experience in my 20s, wow. even in my 30s that most people did. And then in my mid 20s, I was over 400 pounds. The highest we got recorded medically was 458 pounds. Today, I'm like 163. That's incredible. Yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge difference, you know, and it's been a long journey and a long story. And I just literally started taking off the weight Physically, I just had a, a major surgery, a, a seven-hour surgery to remove it, the first of four surgeries to remove the excess skin. Mm. And there's a lot into that. There's a lot trapped in that mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. physically. Who am I if I'm not that girl? Mm -hmm. Am I still the funny fat girl? Mm. Can I just be the funny girl? You know, mm. am I oh, like I still think of myself as a fat person, and I, I, uh, I do. I think of myself. Um, all the time is obese. Like I, I do not have a concept that I'm not obese wow. and, um, and what that means and how I can, I can sit in that chair and not worry about it breaking. I mean, those were things I used to think about constantly sure. all the time. I used to hate going to restaurants where they would sit me in a, in a like bench or like a booth thing. Now I'm, I'm always like, can I sit in the booth? <laughs> and then I, I'm still scared. I'm like, I don't know if I'll make it. And Celebrate I, it. I Celebrate make it, it. You know, yeah. like it's 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 a total. It's yeah. it's really it's trippy. And I know not everybody has that ex extreme with weight, but I like to talk about it because it is so extreme. Yeah. And and just to put a human touch like experience mm -hmm. on a very human reaction. Mm -hmm. My self medication was with food, but a lot of people self medicate with pornography. Mm -hmm. They self-medicate with drinking. They mm -hmm. self-medicate with, I mean, plug it in, you yeah. know, I mean, well, and whether it's weight or something else something about else. yourself, right. Um, you know, for me, I'll be vulnerable right now. My nose, it okay. really freaks me out. Like Your nose? my nose. Okay. So you're hearing it here first, folks. This is when huge. I was a kid, there's okay. a reason, there's a reason you may have noticed that I always sit on the right side when I have hosts or when I have guests on the show. Really? Yeah. And there's also a reason that I hate that the cropped in camera, the, the close up of me is on that side uh, and it captures more of my left side. This is so fascinating. Here's, yeah. So here's the story of uh, when I was a kid, um, I was playing baseball and I got beamed. I was up to <gasps> bat and I got beamed in the face with a baseball right in the face. Oh and my, my nose ended up over here paramedics had to come right onto the field to get me half the paramedics that came to help me ended up having to help my mom because as soon as she saw my face mm -hmm. she started vomiting and and fainted oh my god and so you know there's there's just red mud <laughs> just stuff everywhere it's it's a disaster oh and you know i passed out obviously uh i'm sitting i'm laying in the ambulance and i wake up and i'm like what is going on and i and i ask them i just feel this throbbing on my face and i ask them to hand me a mirror and so they made the mistake of doing that. They should never have shown me what I looked like. Um, How but old were you? I was in junior high. Okay. 
Um, wow. Yeah. And so basically when they did the realignment surgery, because again, my nose was like way off, like it was a disaster and I was swollen as crap. Um, so when they did the realignment, I don't know what the reason is, whether it was something they couldn't have done better or if it, they did the best they could or something. I don't know. Um, but basically there's just still this very slight thing where it's not perfectly aligned. And that's all you see. That's all I see. The moment wow. I see a photo, the moment I see a video. You're like, gross. Yeah. Um, and it you, freaks me out. That is so crazy. And so it impacts like family photos. Like I got to make sure I scurry to the one side. I got to, you know, huh. it's so dumb and it's so vain. But like it's literally since childhood. Yeah. That has been a, a thing. Uh, it's and like branded in your psyche. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's yeah. like, you know, someone like Alina who loves me, she's like, Nick, it looks fine. Don't worry about it. It's like, you know, words like that aren't um, enough to mm -hmm. fix so many years of deeply ingrained ideas about yourself. Yeah. Yes. And that is, it's actually a great segue into, <laughs> I, 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 that is so great because that's exactly what happened to me when I started losing weight, mm. if that makes sense. And I found myself in experiences that I had never been in before because my weight had been a protection. Like it's funny if you have not funny, haha, but like mm -hmm. if you have a, a, an issue that is physical that people can see, like I always say, I was at such a disadvantage. I was at such a vulnerable, you know, you said I'm really good at being vulnerable. People say that all the time. And I think it's because being morbidly obese, when I walked in the room, I couldn't hide it from you. Mm. You knew the thing I hated most about myself. Mm. You knew the darkest thing about myself mm -hmm. that I, you know, like I had, I, I, it was part of my everyday constant. If somebody was an alcoholic, they could hide that. If somebody was a pedophile, they could hide that. I don't know that. Mm. But I walk in the door, barely, and you're like, oh, we know what her issue is. Mm -hmm. you know, And we can judge her and we can know all this stuff. So I was already out there. I couldn't hide, yeah. right? You can't physically hide that. So um, when the weight started coming off, which took 15 years to lose 292 pounds, which I'm still losing. I'm not done. So I hope people aren't looking at me going like, well, she's got a way to go. Whatever. Like, I know. No. I know I do. I know only, I do. I got a long way to go. Reason. Action somebody a long can way to go. logically have seeing you on this episode after what you've described is wow. <laughs> She's amazing. You're very sweet. Well, I've got a photo. I actually brought a photo yeah, yeah. and I can give it to you. Like I, I brought a physical one. Um because it is it's hard to imagine what that actually looks like, mm -hmm. you know. Um well, it really doesn't even look like you. It, it's crazy. Yeah, it yeah. really and it's it's hard for me, it's hard for me to understand and what's really and kind of going what, what you were saying about the personality, what's really beautiful is the people who have been in my life from my whole life, uh, they always say, God, I live, I don't remember you being that big. Mm. It's even hard for them. And wow. they were there, mm -hmm. you know, and they were like, I don't remember that. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? And, but there, it, it's, it's been a really long story and journey. And I'm definitely in this trippy part of it where I'm just now, just now you're, you're here. It's, this is like real time y'all getting to the healing part of it. Mm. This is just now starting because for so long it was survival and it was really difficult, but I definitely ended up in some pretty scary, dark, very human spaces because we are complex mm -hmm. and things that happened to us in childhood and things that are, mm -hmm. you know, a big deal that are ingrained in us and whatever. I mean, that comes with you in adulthood if it wasn't you know, like mm -hmm. taking care of, or you, I'd even know, I'd mm -hmm. even know I needed to take care of some stuff because I've been protected for so long yeah. by my safety suit mm -hmm. that when the safety suit was gone, all of a sudden I had some stuff and I was like, oh my gosh. And it was, it was, it was a really dark time in my life. And I'm just now coming out of it. Wow. I'm sitting here telling you, like, I'm just now surviving it. Wow. Um, and I'm just now making a turn into a, the healing part. And I'm Praise really God. lucky that I have a husband that has known me since I was 15, that has walked that journey with me from the very beginning, that knows my heart, that mm -hmm. knows my soul, and has forgiven me for all the mistakes I've made during this time, knows that it wasn't with malice mm -hmm. or, you know, in, you know, bad intention, yeah. but really, really human things mm -hmm. that I did. And he loves me. And it's like, I'm not going anywhere. And I understand why you are struggling, what you're doing. I wish you would stop. <laughs> it hurts my feelings and I'm sad mm -hmm. and it makes me sad for you, but I love you and I'm not going anywhere. And I know you, even though wow. you don't know you. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, he seems like an incredible guy. He is. He really is. And I'm really I wish blessed. we lived closer to each other because I feel like <laughs> I'd want to hang out with him like all the time. Everyone dumps me for Nathan immediately. <laughs> they're like, oh, she's the fun one. And then they're like, oh, but Nathan's magical. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm done. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I am more fun than Nathan, though. Yeah. I, I, okay. 
<laughs> that's it. That's you gotta, all I got. You make the pitch. I can make yeah. you laugh. Yeah. That's it. But Nathan, man, he's solid. You're going to want him for everything else. That's amazing. No, he's a good yeah. guy. So he he literally has walked this walk, the darkest of the dark with me. Yeah. Major sins, major everything. And I sit here as a sinner who has been forgiven. Mm-hmm. And I want to tell my story and not go into tremendous detail, but just to be really real about like, Guys, this is real life, mm-hmm. you know, and and there's real stuff, it's and messy. we are multi-dimensional people with yeah. all this kind of stuff. And you can love Jesus a lot, and you can meet the Pope, and you could go to Medjugorje, and you could do rosaries every night, like I did growing up. Every night we pray the rosary, and you can be blessed with a really rich, you know, Catholic life and understand it, and still fall, mm-hmm. and fall hard, and be very human. But what differentiates you? is what do you do after the fall? Right. And you get back up and you go to confession. Yeah. And you ask for forgiveness from family and friends, which is what I've done, really have. I've sat down with family and friends and asked them forgiveness, told them what I've done, been really real. And uh, and now I'm working on forgiving myself. That's incredible. And that's where I'm at. And yeah. I'm just being really honest and real because it's a, it's a complex story and it's not pretty. And being so a human's it, not, it's messy. So much of it is so tied into the question of our identity. Yeah. Because even your ability to forgive yourself, like, are you, do you see yourself as someone that is worthy of being forgiven, that's worthy of being loved? And it's so, like, Alina and I try so hard with our kids to, in the way we speak to them, program into them an awareness that they are inherently good and that mm-hmm. they are inherently, like, instead of saying, you know, hey, why are you being bad right now? It's like, hold on, you are you are not being bad. You are good and you're making sad choices. Right. You know, and a choice can be forgiven. A choice can be undone. Right. But you can't apologize for or, or be forgiven for your identity and, and your dignity. Like that's yeah. something that was given to you and that is good. Your right. identity is good. Your dignity is good. So um, I, I just feel like building up a positive, you know, self-esteem is such a, a silly term. What I mean is like a positive uh, understanding and humility of, of the glory of what we each are. You know, like Thomas Merton said uh, when he saw people standing uh, or he was standing in a street corner and he saw everyone hustling about. And he said, if only they could all see that they're shining like the sun. Mm. Um, And I I think that um, I love that. Yeah, it's it's powerful. Yeah. And I think that if we saw ourselves, because it has to start with how you see yourself. If we saw ourselves like we're shining like the sun it'd be a lot easier to see other people like they're shining like the sun. Mm. Because if you see other people like they're shining like the sun, but you don't see it in yourself, then it's still um, uh, not right. That's me. Or that's what, yeah, that's what I'm, that's exactly right. And I am just, for the first time, here I am, I'm 43. So people can now know like, oh dear God, why is she there? (laughs) Like She should be crocheting somewhere. Um, (laughs) I don't crochet. (laughs) I don't do good things as a 40 year old. I I can hang out way better with 20 year olds and three year olds. Um, but for the first time in my life in my forties, I am just trying to understand. And it's literally the pandemic because this pause, this world pause that I had to really like how they gave you a mirror in the ambulance. That's what happened to me Mm. in a metaphorical way, uh, that the pandemic did for me as a person, I was on such a downward spiral. And I didn't know it. Wow. I didn't know it. I didn't know my nose was way over here. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's and almost then, like, tell me if I'm uh, yeah. perceiving this correctly. It's almost yeah. like in your being extroverted and in seeing, being, feeling validated by others exactly. in those uh, interpersonal dynamics and like, wow, they love me and I'm funny and I'm validated. And then when that's ripped away from you, what do you lean into for your value? Yeah. Exa- no, ex- that, that, so thanks for therapy, Nick, and everybody for coming along. <laughs> We're going to save money this week. Nathan doesn't have to pay my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that's what we're, I, I think that's actually my journal entry for this week. I'm just kidding. I don't have a journal. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't write. I'll write it for you. I'll write yeah, this Nathan, page. Nathan will write for me. He yeah. can write. <laughs> but no, I mean, basically, that's exactly right. Like, I mean, for so long, and I mean by for so long, I mean until like uh, the, now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's currently still happening, yeah, Nick. Yeah. Okay. It, all my validation came from, because I did not possess self-worth, self-esteem, mm-hmm. um, then it 
always was about getting it from someone else. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, well, I'm the funny girl. Here's my worth to you. Yeah, I'm really, really fat and I can't fit into that chair. And I mean that. Like, I'm not saying this like, I I will give you a picture. I want you to post it so people can be like, oh, okay, she's like serious. Um, So I got to come up with another reason why I am allowed to be in this space with you. Mm -hmm. Why I'm allowed to be on the planet next to you. Because I I do not believe I I bring any other value. So I'm going to make up something to make you want to keep me around. Let me try to, let me try to convince you. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it's a form of manipulation, right? Like I want you to fall in love with me in this way because otherwise you're going to get rid of me. It almost seems to me that it's also not just about wanting them to see that, but want you wanting to see that they want to see you. 100%. Right? Like I'm uh, through, through, through being validated by this person's um, appreciation for my existence. Now I'm allowed to appreciate my own existence. And I, I would not give myself permission mm-hmm. for what you just said, unless somebody gave it to me first. Exactly. I wasn't yeah. strong enough internally. I did not have an internal structure. I, I missed that day. <laughs> okay. Really and truly uh, that, that comes from God mm. and that comes from me. Mm-hmm. And then it can go beyond that. I am literally going through that right now. You're literally looking at someone going through an identity crisis. I'm not kidding. Like this is like legit stuff because yeah. once that safety suit boundary, physical boundary came off and all of a sudden I was getting validation from other people, not because I was funny, but all of a sudden I'd walk in a room and I was looked at like a normal girl. Mm. I had never experienced that before. I don't have the stories from my 20s of mm-hmm. being at a bar and a guy walking up to me and talking to me. Or da, 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 da. Which might have saved you from some grief. It might have saved me from a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. You know what I mean? I never had that. Yeah. Never had it. Because guess what? When you're 400 pounds and you're in your 20s, I was getting noticed. Be- and the reason I was funny and why I was getting noticed was because, hey, I'm in control of why you're going to look at me. You're not going to look at me because I'm fat. Mm. You're going to look at me because I'm funny. Mm-hmm. And you're going to look at me because I'm going to control the situation. I'm going to tell a story. Yeah, yeah. That's where you're going to look. And then all of a sudden when that was different, and I still had the personality though, right? Mm-hmm. But I looked different and things were changing. It was it was like a person who's Amish, <laughs> like going to New York City. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you're like... Where are the buggies with the horses? What is that? And we're like, guys, that's a car. That's an Uber, yeah. you know, and never seeing an Uber before. Mm-hmm. Like my life changed when the weight dramatically left. Mm-hmm. And that took 15 years for that to happen. It took a long time. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't prepared. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's been a very interesting last few years mm-hmm. of, huh, <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't quite prepared for mm-hmm. the world in this way because mm-hmm. I didn't know to be. Mm-hmm. I never experienced the world in this body, in yeah. this way. And here I am, a really Catholic person in a really strong marriage, mm-hmm. but I'm very human. And all of a sudden, my life changed yeah. without my, like, not my permission in that way. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's real. And, and I'm, I'm trying to navigate it. And it seems like pretty clear, like, in this transition uh, that has been drawn out, but now especially with the the additional surgeries you're doing, yeah, like God, you know, is giving you the opportunity, has given you the opportunity, and continues to give you that opportunity um, to kind of like rebuild yourself physically. Mm-hmm. But it's coupled with an opportunity to reestablish your understanding of who you are, right? And uh, I'm curious because, like, it's so easy. There's you know the throwaway term like you know find your identity in Jesus, and like, great. But like, how do you do that? You yeah. know, like, especially when, when people are so complex and when, when what, uh, like we talked about earlier, what our identity is made up of, which is all of our ups and downs throughout life, like including trauma, including good mm-hmm. things, uh, the people that we know, all this stuff, like, w- what do you think it can look like right now as you're rebuilding your, your identity and your, your, your sense of dignity, what it's based on beyond like the cliche throwaway term of, you know, find your identity as your, as the daughter of Jesus, yeah, you know, like, I, I, well, listen, the daughter of the king. Whatever. Yeah. But, it's not, it's not helpful. You know, you yeah. need something tangible and, and when you figure out that you have no internal scaffolding, yeah. it's this really scary thing because at this point in your forties, you should have some type of internal structure that yeah. has been built, but when you don't have any, I'm having to literally start from ground zero. And that's why I say like the, my foundation in my faith and with my husband and my marriage is the only reason I'm surviving this whole thing. Wow. You know, and you would think, oh, losing 300 pounds would be the hard part compared to what I'm having to do right now. Mm-hmm. That's a walk in the park. Mm-hmm. Took a long time. Mm-hmm. But what I'm going through right now is, I mean, like it, it, this is the most difficult thing I've ever faced. And 
the pandemic is the biggest blessing and not because of the pandemic, but it gave me the time. Mm. It gave me the time to process. It gave me the mirror and the ambulance to look at myself and to see the damage. Mm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. I, I, I wasn't, I didn't see it. I didn't know. Like it, it just happened. It's like the, you know, it just happened slowly. Like the frog thing. Like if you put a mm-hmm. frog in boiling water, it'll jump out. But if you put a frog in a, in a pot of water and you turn it up slowly, he'll die. Mm-hmm. I was slowly dying mm. and I wasn't aware. And um, and so the pandemic literally saved me, saved my life because it gave me the time and it gave me the space to do the work. So the emotional work started. And the first thing I had to do, and I talk about this now, is I was meeting with my um, spiritual advisor in April of 2020. So the pandemic, pandemic had just kind of started, yeah. but I already knew I was a hot mess mm-hmm. and I was in a lot of trouble spiritually and emotionally and all the things. Mm-hmm. And he came over to the house and... Um, And he looked at me and things were getting really dark. And I mean, like, I didn't have a reason to stay on the planet dark, Mm -hmm. not just, you know. Um, And he looked at me and he said, Liv, you don't have any hope. Mm. And I've always had buckets and loads of love. Like, I want to lick everyone's face. So also the pandemic was terrible for me because I was just like, why can't I hug and kiss everybody? Yeah, full disclosure, like, super glad that hasn't happened here yet. So no. <laughs> People don't like it when you do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Did you have to learn that the hard way? Oh, I had to yeah. learn that the hard way. I'm like, okay, like, inside, I identify as, like, yeah, a yeah. lap dog. Like, I just want to, like, sit on everyone's lap and, like, cuddle. Oh uh, I mean that in a good way, in a Catholic way. Um, <laughs> see, it works. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, and and also faith. I've always had faith of like a child. Like I've never had to think about, I'm like, believe in God. Yeah. Done. Why Mm -hmm. wouldn't I believe in him? People like, do you need any proof? I'm like, proof for what? No, you told me you believe in him. I'm done. We're good. Mm -hmm. Hope though. Yeah. I don't have that. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't realize that. And so starting in April of 2020 until kind of recently, I think I probably made it a whole year. Um, I literally, before I started the day would say, God, I need heroic hope. Mm. And he told me to say that. And it came from a book, um, my spiritual advisor. And um, not just hope, but heroic hope. Like we're talking about a different level. And I knew it was, I was that far gone. I was that far down the well. I couldn't get myself out. I couldn't claw myself out. This was going to take a supernatural being. And I know one. (laughs) And... (laughs) That's <laughs> like, well, now's the time to call that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's let's call up Kevin Jonas, everybody. <laughs> and so I called Kevin, and uh, he picked up. Did he? He picked up. Okay. He picked up. Well, yeah. he's not. He's Kevin Jonas. He's got the time. Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm talking, guys. These are all jokes. No, so I had to call on God, right? And I, I really did because I could not do it myself. And so I literally had to go to Him to ask for the strength to be able to do the work. Mm. That's how far. Nick, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense, I didn't even have the strength to do the work because surviving and getting to the end of every single day alive Mm. was all I could do. Mm. That was it. That was it. That was the whole day. Yeah. That's all I could do. And we were just trying to get me to the end of every day. Yeah. And, but that's not a way to live, right? No. I mean, but I mean, it's also a reality reality. for so many people. It was reality. I think think that we don't enough, like some people a lot talk about the, the reality of spiritual warfare around us. Yeah. Um, but some people, even even those who talk about it a lot, like we're kind of missing out on some of the ways that that plays out. Like, oh, I'm addicted to porn. It's spiritual warfare. Yeah, okay. So is 75 percent of the rest of the human beings on the planet. <laughs> right. Um, and I don't that don't mean that to diminish. Right. I, I just mean like it goes so much beyond that too. Like people that are in despair. That's spiritual warfare. Yeah. Uh, and they can just feel like it's depression and get medicated and that can help. But like there's another side of what's happening here. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, I don't I, I don't I don't viewers, listeners, there's a million different places to stand on the topic I'm about to bring up. But like childbirth, you know, some people are like, oh, please give me all the medicine. And then other people yeah. are like, I want to do it all natural. And there are pros and cons to both. Obviously, one right. of them is that you uh, hate the experience and one of them is that you love it. But in the end, whatever, you can, you know, pick, take your guess about which one topic. is which. Yeah. But my point is that like when you numb yeah. the experience of childbirth, there's a lot that you miss out on, including a lot less damage to yourself, um, including uh, that you only push when you actually should push, right? rather than just pushing the entire time, ending up, I'm, I don't want to get super graphic, but like the point is that, you know, a lot of times when we're just kind of band-aiding some of these issues, yep. when there's spiritual components at play, yep. like, Liv, the devil wanted you to lose that battle. 100%. Absolutely. The devil still wants you to lose that battle. Uh, every day he cheers for that. Yeah. yeah. And viewer, listener, yeah. like if you are struggling with whether it's depression or despair or a lack of knowing why you should keep living or any yeah. number of other things, every single day you wake up, 
that's not like a vacation day from the battle. Like the devil wants you to lose. The, the devil doesn't want you to have joy. The devil doesn't want you to live heaven on earth here and now, even though you have the opportunity to through the sacraments, through the church, through community. Um, and so like, you know, there was so much happening there and still so is much. because you're still in this. I am. I mean, I'm coming out of it. Right. And, and it's, you know, it's a complex story. But, you know, it, ba- you know, the devil, his two favorite things are shame and fear. I say that all the time. Those are his top two yeah. weapons of choice. Yeah. So if you are suffocating in shame, okay, and if you are absolutely wrapped in fear, that is paralyzing. That's spiritually paralyzing. It's physically paralyzing, emotionally paralyzing, all of it. And they all work together. We'd like to really like put things in boxes. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, you just didn't love Jesus enough. No, no, listen, mm-hmm. I love Jesus something hard. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was not about not loving Jesus. Again, lower the lights, get the fans. Listen, y'all, I'm a fan. Okay. Like yeah. I am all about heaven. I'm going to get there. I hear there's food. So yeah. he's always talking about banquets. I'm like, this is my guy. He started off with wine and a mm-hmm. wedding. I'm like, we could hang. So, yeah, yeah. um, The thing is, is that it's not about that. It's not about not having enough faith. It's not about, oh, wow, she just must really love Twinkies if she got to 400 pounds. It wasn't about Twinkies, y'all. Like, people are made up of multi, lots of things. It's complex. And to just separate them all, that's not how it works. They've got to, they work together. They work in tandem. And so you've got to figure out the spiritual component, the emotional component, the psychological and the physical. I believe those all have to go together. And so for me, I was so damaged and wounded and not knowing it, but you don't get to 458 by being, you know, like living on a rainbow. And I was always this happy and joyful and energetic and popular and well-liked. And so it, you know, it's like, well, what does she have to be saying? I love bread, you know? So it was like, well, she seems to win at all the things. I had a hot boyfriend that I've had since I was six, 17. We figured out 17. Um, You know, so it's like, uh, cry me a river, you know, Mm -hmm. but that's not how it works. Yeah. And, and we all have our things and, uh, and this story is a, is a is a story of redemption. Mm-hmm. It's a story of forgiveness. It's a story of of I am now for the first time sitting here saying I am just now starting to see that I am worth living on this planet mm-hmm. because I'm a person. Mm-hmm. Like that sounds so dumb and so basic. I teach that. I've given talks on it. I, I mean, mm-hmm. like that's what it all boils down to. Like because you were chosen by God to live on this planet. Like God who invented the stars and the universe and multi planets and uh, Brad Pitt and he invented <laughs> the Kardashians and he invented all these things. Like and we, Nathan, he, he invented Nathan. Nathan. He invented you know Pluto. Yeah. Is it a planet? We don't know. Like you know he, he invented all these things. Yeah. Okay, but he took time and was like, but we still need Nick and live. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I mean, did we? Did we really? Mm-hmm. I mean, you, I get. I mean, look at what you've done. Like, this is amazing. Um, but so if he thinks in the same breath of I'm going to make a blue whale, I also need to make a live. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make Saturn and put rings and it's going to look really cool. And I'm going to make a live. And I'm going to make Jupiter with that weird storm thing. And I'm going to make a live. And like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like, I, like the, the Rocky Mountains, you know, glaciers, you know, Pacific Ocean. Live. And live. Yeah. Like, you're like over here going like. I don't feel like I'm yeah. Kilimanjaro, you know, like I, <laughs> what am I bringing to the table? But when you see like, that's not only am I more to God because I'm an eternal soul right? Um, than Kilimanjaro, but that he, it was an intentional choice. It wasn't because he was just having a, yeah. a, a low Wednesday <laughs> and he needed one more soul yeah, and yeah. you know, he was bored mm-hmm. and there wasn't anything good on Netflix. He'd already seen everything. Yep. Um, he did it with truth and intention and thought whoa, you know, like, okay, I'm, I'm more important than the Rocky. I'm not even a national park. You can't even get a stamp. If you visit me, you know, like that's (laughs) maybe I should make up one. There you go. Nathan (laughs) shaking his head. (laughs) He's like, and that's the interview. Business Um, idea. Business idea. Live stamps. Yeah, Um, exactly. You were like, how about I give you stamp? No, but that's what, that's what's so powerful to me about the theology of the body and incredible. And, and even some of the stuff that's just in the gospels, like where Jesus refers to us as gods with a lowercase g right like he made in his image and likeness. he wants like, to what does that marry mean? us right. and he wants to bring us uh he wants us to have some of what he's got so that he can bring us up to his level um and he does that by lowering himself to our level because we're worth it you know like that's so powerful yeah and i think maybe that's where we make the mistake or where the enemy starts whispering into us and he's like so you need to lower yourself you know? Oh, interesting. Like, yeah. like you can't even be on that level. You're not worthy of that. And those are lies because mm-hmm. he's the one, he made this whole shindig up, Nick. I mean, he yeah. could have done this thing any way he wanted. He did. 
He and this is what he chose. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what Plan B was or what yeah. the other options were, but this is what. So who am I to argue with the creator of the not just the creator of this earth, the yeah. creator of the entire the cosmos universe, anything that exists? Who am I to say? Well, yeah. but I think this was a trashy product. Right? Like, yeah. Like like you were doing really well, but this I'm not going to get behind. How arrogant of me. Yeah. How apt, but we don't see it that way. Well, because we're wounded, because we see ourselves the way that we have been programmed to through our wounds and through our experiences right. and coping mechanisms. And right. That's what we're and seeing. Shame and fear. Yeah. Like, oh, you should be ashamed of looking the way you did and you should never share, you know, you should be in fear if people found out what you did, mm. like, you know, and to keep it all in the dark, he, the enemy loves that. Yeah. He absolutely has a field day. Yeah. So, you know, it's, listen, it's not easy. Yeah. Whether it's weight or whether it's, it's something that we're not listing here today. There's so many things we could list yeah. about what people go into oh, yeah. for shame and fear. There's like, oh, yeah. A, a litany. It's called the internet, but um, <laughs> <laughs> they have it all listed. I don't even know what all of it is. Uh, but you know, it, it, but the whole point, what I want he, people to hear is, is what you know. I hear all the time, like do the next, do the next right thing, do the next yeah. right. And I say all the time, do the next holy thing, mm. because when I was not living a holy life, and then I had the pause of the world. Jesus, I'm the reason for the pandemic. He had a <laughs> it pause. To get it, it's my fault. Right he had to stop. It and yeah. be like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Like, you can get it together. Yep. Um, I remember saying to Nathan, and he goes, Liv, I want you to just do the next holy thing. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Your past has already happened. Mm -hmm. You can't change it. Mm -hmm. I can own it. I can sit here and say, I did this. I went to my confessor. I confessed. Yep. He gave me absolution. If we really believe in this stuff, yep. if we really say we believe this stuff as Catholics, yep. then we've got to give that to each other. Yep. If I've gone to my priest and I and I mean it, you know what yep. I mean? Not just like, well, I can't wait to do it again. Yep. You know, and like, um, and you really, you really are yeah. sorry. And you really ask for absolution. And, that's the power and of you the, change. That's the power of the cross. You got to change. And that's the power of of the sacrament of confession totally. is on God's part, voluntary amnesia. Ooh. Like he just, he wants to forget. Yeah. He wants to forget. And he offers that to us. I need it. Maybe that's my next prayer. I need amnesia. <laughs> no, no, no. He, <laughs> oh, okay. No, I Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He forgets. Just <laughs> got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> he forgets. Yeah. No, it, it, listen, it's really powerful. And when you can lean into that, when you can lean into the sacraments, mm -hmm. lean into where are you failing as a human? Mm -hmm. Not because you're a failure, mm -hmm. right? Where are you leaning into in your humanity? Mm -hmm. Where are you leaning into sin? Where are you leaning into the darkness? Where are you, whatever. All right, fine. Name it, say it, own it. Mm -hmm. Go and ask for forgiveness, right? Get absolution and then do the next holy thing. Go that way. Mm -hmm. Keep going forward. You don't have to continue. And if you fall again, you do it again. It's the same process over and over. When you taught your kids how to pee in the toilet, I'm going to I'm gonna guess it didn't go smoothly the first, like it was a one and done and then you never had an accident. Have you had a kid? You have three. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, like oh, yeah. it's, it it's a, a constant yeah. conversation. You're like, let's go over this again. Yeah. This is a bowl of water and we're <laughs> going to put things into this bowl yes. and not on your sister's head. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just do this. And it's a a constant thing. Mm -hmm. You've got to be as forgiving to yourself, yeah. okay, as you are to your children. Yeah. And and so I've had that is where I'm at right now. I'm giving myself permission to be human. That's so good. That's where I'm at. That's so good. That's that's about as close as I'm getting right now. I'm gonna get there. I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah. I believe. Um well, but, there's, but there's that's also no the like I've arrived, you know, like no, you shouldn't. Right, exactly. Yeah, that would be scary. And yeah. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Look and at this. This is the best God can do. Yeah. They're all like, well, now I'm not going to believe in God. Oh, God. Like, you know, everyone believe in him. Uh, so you, so you yeah, were telling me work before, in progress. We, uh, work before in progress. we recorded this that there was a uh, like a retreat experience or a conference that you yeah. attended that was a big part of. Yeah, this whole transformation. Yeah. So I ended up writing a women's conference called Genius. And it kind of is what gave me a little bit. I have a very tiny platform, but this is where my little tiny platform came from. Um, it's called the Genius Conference. And I did it in Texas twice. It was uh, once in Austin, which is the cool part of Texas. And I don't live there. So, <laughs> so then the, and then I did it in Dallas the week that coronavirus hit America. Oh like people were calling yeah. saying, so are you still doing this thing? I'm like, oh yeah, it's just in California, that coronavirus thing. Like nobody, you remember those days? Oh, I remember. Yeah, I, I remember that. We're like, that's like a San Francisco problem. Yeah. And I was like, we're <laughs> far away from there. That's yeah. not how viruses work. Yeah. Uh, I'm a doctor. Um, and so people <laughs> were like, that doesn't sound right at all. So I had my conference anyway. It was March 6th through 8th. 
2020. Okay. Like the fact that we got 150 women together Miracle. in a room, right, as this is all hitting the fan, uh, we're really lucky that no one got, I mean, I can't even talk about that. Like anyway, God was very kind. Um, but the very first Genius Conference was in was the one in, in um, Austin. And it was, it's a long story of how it happened, but it's a great story, but not for today. And so anyway, it's, it's Saturday night. I have 150 women at this conference. I got Jen Fulweiler mm-hmm. to come do stand up comedy. This Amazing. was right when she was becoming a comedian and she hadn't done her tour yet, but she had a big set and we did some comedy together in Austin. And I said, well, you got a 30 minute set now. This is a captive audience. You should want to come do this, Jen. And, uh, and she did. And she came out of the goodness of her heart That's and was awesome. very kind and did her 30 minute set that a lot of it is still in the the Amazon special. And um, it was right before her, Mary Lindenberg was giving her talk, who I mentioned earlier, all these Mm -hmm. people are all the same. Mm -hmm. And the term was emotional hangover. That's what, Mm. that's what Mary said. I was experiencing was an emotional hangover. Yeah, that's good. Which is a good, I know. That's really good. Uh, Mary's very wise. And Mary was my keynote for my conference. Again, I'm a nobody. This is when I'm literally not on the scene of anything. Nobody knows who I am. And I see all these really famous people that I got to come speak. Jen's going to come do comedy. I've got 150 people and I'm sitting down. I'm watching Mary Lindenberg. I look around the room and this is literally, and I mean this in, in a Protestant way. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's serious. I heard the Lord Jesus in my heart, y'all. And I mean it. I mean it in the Baptist revival way in my heart. Cause I don't talk like that as a Catholic. Yeah, I didn't grow say? up saying that. I'm not kidding. Literally clear as day. Live, look around this room. You've always been a connector. You've always been a networker, but this is the first time you've ever done it for me. Wow. That's so good. Sit with that for a second. Yeah. Wow. Because I've always, that's what I've, oh, Nick, you got to meet my friend. Yeah, da, da, yeah. Da. Oh, Nathan, you got to meet. Da, da, da. Like, that's what I'm so good at. I'm, I am the Kevin Bacon of normal people. <laughs> you can connect me to anybody. I never did it for him before. Never wow. used my gift. I never thought about, wait a second. This is for the, but I thought the glory of God that I was doing was if I connect you guys and you guys were, but this was all about him. Mm -hmm. And that's when I understood my purpose. And that's really when my life started changing was that moment. That was a tipping point for me. Understanding why I was put on this planet. Yeah. Yeah. And what my gifts were So what did you do with that? (laughs) And thanks everybody. We'll let you know how that goes. Uh, Yeah. And and so, but we're, we're not impressed. So what... (laughs) Yeah. Seems like you need another message, Liv. Yeah. <laughs> Where's God now? He needs to talk to your heart again. Uh, yeah, so that's a good question, Nick. Um, I'm understanding this big personality I have. Yeah, yeah. This energy that I have. I'm Buddy the Elf, okay, as a human <laughs> without tights, which that's a gift for all of y'all that I don't wear them. Um, <laughs> this creativity, this out of the box, this love of life, mm-hmm. this love of people, this love of God on a level that is just not human. Mm-hmm. I now see what it's all for. And I see it now without needing my safety suit. Wow. And I see it now for how in my little part of getting souls back to heaven and getting souls back into God. And the way I see it is I love people like I already told you, mm-hmm. I not healthy amount. <laughs> That's okay. Therapy. Um, and I want everyone to fall in love with people because when you go to Rome, and you go to the Vatican and you see these incredible pieces of art, right? You see like these sculptures, right? You're like, oh my gosh, like that is amazing. That looks like a person. It's made out of rock. What? Mm-hmm. You know, and you're just standing there for hours. And then you want to know who did that? Who's the guy that looked at a piece of rock and said, I see a person in there and I'm going to carve oh, yeah. it. You want to get to know the creator, right? Mm-hmm. Because you fell in love with the artwork. I don't think there's a, a more beautiful piece of artwork on the planet than human beings, mm. period. So if I can make you fall in love with God's artwork, yeah. then you're going to want to know who God is. And wow. that's my part. I'm good at bringing people to people. I love that. Does that make sense? That's so good. And that's how I'm going to get them to God. Yeah. And so uh, I'm hoping through multimedia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so In today's good. day and age, that is, yeah. that is my little job. Wow. So multimedia so you're looking at like social media you're looking at um and, YouTube. And youtube i've got a new show That's what I'm i with a network yeah and i'm really excited about this i've got a whole team i just got the theme song sent to me today i have a cousin who's a broadway composer cool and she wrote my theme song and her best friend is a big broadway actress and she sang it for me oh, wow. so um i'm really pumped about that i just got rebranded i got it yesterday it's been months in the making so i will have a new website cool. i'll have new graphics Amazing. i have 
amazing. have a whole new look. I have a new font. I have a new... Because when I came on the scene, because Jin was being a bully. Just kidding. <laughs> Jin's the best thing that happened to me. Um... I didn't know who I was. I didn't yeah. have an identity, Nick. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I was the funny fat girl. And you didn't even know what your mission was specifically. No clue. Yeah. And now I do. And now um, I'm finding that out. And so it's a really beautiful time in my life, in my career, in my physical self, in my emotional self, in mm -hmm. my spiritual self. All of it's starting to come together, if that yeah. makes sense. So you'll do more of the types of conferences you did with Genius? Genius is a different arm and okay. that i started a nonprofit right when the uh okay, pandemic perfect. happened yeah. so that was That's like us we started that right was a win -win, yeah. right that was yeah. i mean like god you could have we just stopped talking to my heart like yeah. you know we could have just <laughs> saved the money but that's fine uh yeah so genius i hope one day we'll come back you know okay. i want to wait until we can all lick each other yeah, um yeah. in the good god way uh and not i'm trying to figure out what way that is <laughs> <laughs> I just mean it in a good Nathan is shaking his plate please this is why no one's gonna hire you and no. this is how Liv got canceled oh my god right here on the Awakened right here Catholic show. just as she started uh, it was over so <laughs> just means I love I just I just love okay so yeah. you're uh, and tell me about your radio show. So my new show, it's a it's a new network. They also started right before the pandemic. It kind of makes oh, you gosh. sad, but it's in Connecticut and Long Island. So it's New York and Connecticut. It's called the Veritas uh, Catholic um, Media Network. Beautiful. And um, this guy, his, he's phenomenal. And his name is Steve Lee. He worked on Wall Street for 13 years at the top firm. And then when he was coming in, this is uh, out of Stanford, Connecticut. So they have a direct line in a um, Manhattan. Okay. So a lot of people live in Stanford, but they work in New York. Okay. He's coming home from, you know, wall street as you do. Yeah. And <laughs> God talked to his heart and said, we need a Catholic network. And, uh, he doesn't have any broadcast experience Amazing. or anything like that. And he started one. And so it started in August of 2019. Um, Cat, uh, Bishop, what is it? Frank Caggiano. I finally learned how to say it. Um, is the Bishop of Bridgeport. He has a show on this network and it's Beautiful. called, let me be Frank. Uh, I, I see what he did there with the yeah. word because of his name. It's cute. It's cute. That's, that's, okay. that's a fun bishop. Yeah. It's like a pun. I, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. He's okay. Italian. Casiano. I hope he's Italian. Um, you know, but no, he is. He really is. And uh, he's fantastic. And so, um, so Steve has some, you know, new shows and he let me pitch him a show and I thought it was going to be a commuter show. And because I thought, well, what do people do, you know, when they're going into Long Island or into Manhattan? I guess they have to listen to something. I should do a morning show. Mm -hmm. pitched him that and I said but my dream is to do a late night show to be like Jimmy Fallon and oh so he gosh. called me you'd and be so good for that so that's what I'm doing so I have a new show no late night show <laughs> and it's called it's not that late with Liv Harris that's amazing that's what the name of the show is because they're going to air it on the east coast at 8 p.m. and I was wow. like that's funny because it's not that late um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the name of the show and we're talking Jimmy Fallon I've got an intro studio producer who's going to be my Ed McMahon my Quest love my love Paul and uh you know guests the whole nine yards the whole i mean i want you to think jimmy fallon i want you to think yeah. leno i want you to think so is this Carson, audio centric or is it video all it's so all we it. will oh send gosh. the audio and they veritas will produce it for and then broadcast it um in their network and they um are trying to move into manhattan so right now they have a listenership of about nine hundred thousand because it's the lower half of or lower third i think of connecticut and all of long island which is the Queensboro. so i'm in new york mm -hmm. i'm just saying mm -hmm. listen i want to be in new york um and so when they get in manhattan they'll have you know five to six million uh, my team, um, which my executive producer for this show is Anna Lincoln, who's also my, um, she's so amazing. I could not do life without Link, uh, without Lincoln. That was cute. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan works for Lincoln Financial. Lincoln is very important to me. I just need a top hat. Um, without Anna, she's also my assistant. Um, and Edmund Mitchell, he built my mm -hmm. studio. So I'm going to get a new set, you know, because my set isn't really a late night set. Um, so so you're, you'll be producing all of this in the studio that Edmund is helping you build. Yes. At back in Texas. Yes. And we start production them. in like two weeks oh and gosh. it will it will roll out at the beginning of July. The actual show. So my team will produce it for video, YouTube, all the other things That's and so the cool. platforms of all the type of, you know, Spotify, da, 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 da. And, uh, and Steve is giving me full range. Oh and I gosh. said, so it's going to be an entertainment show. When I hear Jim Fallon, when I hear Leno, when I hear Carson, you know, whatever, you know, um, I hear entertainment. I don't hear like, oh, everybody turn into catechism page 12. Right, not that there's right. anything wrong with that. Yeah. Um, or tonight's virtue is, you know, it's not, I said, I, I, and he goes, 
yeah, we already have a lot of theology out there. We already have a lot of whatever. What we don't have is entertainment and people just happy to be alive yeah. and remembering why are we Catholic to begin with? Because we just are excited that we were chosen mm -hmm. to be on the planet. Let's enjoy life. Yeah. That we don't have that joy part. That I've got. You know, mm -hmm. that I understand. Yeah. So good thing I'm not telling anybody what virtue of the night is. Um, <laughs> but I can tell you how, how to enjoy life. That yeah, I, I can do. What a great fit for so you. So that's what I'm going to be amazing. bringing to the scene. And um, it's not always going to be Catholics. They're going to let me do my show the way I want to do it. That's awesome. So we're going to have a mix of people. And I'm, I'm really pumped about that because wow. I think we need to get a little bit out of our echo chambers mm -hmm. and meet other souls that were created by yeah. God, not just the Catholic ones. Absolutely. And let's all get back into loving each other. And um, through it, hopefully people are like, well, gosh, she seems excited and they all seem happy. What are they drinking? Yeah. And then they find Jesus. Yeah. See? Amen. See what we're going to yeah. do? Yeah. Very, See? very subtle, deceptive uh -huh. evangelization. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And they want to know the big guy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But they got to enjoy Catholics to begin with. We got to gotta bring people back. They got to yeah. know that we're not just, you know, what, you know, what people think about Catholics. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the honestly, bells and the whistles and I, the smells. Nothing wrong with that. Right. But that's not all that yeah. we are. We are. there. It's a lot. And you that know? doesn't appeal to everybody anyways. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's exactly the ethos behind everything we're doing here. Is, right. Is, you get yeah, it. I totally get it. We're on the same 100%. mission. So we're that, that mission. this is my little sliver. We'll see how it goes. I mean. That's going to be amazing. As a creative, listen, you never know what's going to hit and what's not. Yeah. But, um, but we'll see. So in the meantime. I'm just going to have fun and stop off in Ohio when I'm around. So, yeah. And meet, and meet friends from your, the internet. Nathan, Liv, this is your Bowling Green home, Bowling Green, Ohio. Come to uh, Houston, y'all. Come anytime. Uh, so, you start production in two weeks. Yeah, when I get home from New York, because I'm going it? up to the network and I'm going up to do some things and yeah. hang out with some Broadway friends and things like course, that. As, back one to my, as one yeah. does. And um, then I'll float, I fly home and we start production. And when does the uh, show start going We public? have a date. I, I, okay, I'm going to say it, but don't hold me to it. It's, I think, I think they're to release it July 8th, I think okay. is when the July -ish. first show. Yeah, we'll yeah. Beginning July -ish. of July. Let's say that yeah. because let's just be honest. But yeah, so it's gonna be a weekly one hour show is where we're gonna start it. So cool. And it's gonna be yeah. really rad. And I wanna be the place where everybody's like, oh, we're in Houston, we gotta go to Liv. Yeah. You yeah. know, like I gotta go hang out at Liv's house or hey, I got this I big thing coming that. out. Right. I wanna go promote our own Liv's. Like, I wanna be the Jimmy Fallon for all of us, not just if you're Catholic or not. I want it to be a great show, not a great Catholic show. I love that. I want it to That's be so a great show for entertainment, fun, laughing. Yeah, great people, and it and seems like you have great people on your side. To other pumps, yeah. Wait till you see my new branding friend. I can't wait. And I hear my theme wait. song with the Broadway people. It's like, <laughs> okay, that's gonna be fun. So yeah. we're pumped. We're excited to get some new energy out there. Where can people find you, Liv? TheLivHarrison.com. It's gonna be changing, so you might go okay. today and see my website, and then next week it's gonna look different. Anna's working on it, awesome. um, but TheLivHarrison.com. I am on social media. I have stepped back because I've been working on. Yeah, Did you yeah. hear my story? I had yeah, a lot to yeah. do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I, I am away from social media. I'm still there. So don't run away from me. And yes, come friend me or talk to me through there because yeah, you can. Yeah. But I'm on Instagram. Well, we'll tag e. all the things. And you're also on the Awaken app. I am. I am. So, and I do have a podcast, Talk to Me with Liv Harrison. That'll come back. And then awesome. this new show, it's not yeah. that late. All right. So we'll have links to everything Liv related. I have been Nick De La Torre. This has been The Awakened Catholic Show. And this has been Liv Harrison. Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, before we go, just want to tell you one thing. Jesus loves you. This show and all media on Awaken Catholic is made possible by the Awaken Nation and the Hollow app. The Awaken Nation is a community of people like you who support all things Awaken for as cheap as a cup of coffee a week and get access to exclusive content. Learn more by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate. Hollow is the only audio-guided Catholic prayer app focused on contemplative prayer and traditional Catholic meditation such as Lexio Divina, Daily Examine, and the Rosary. We here at Awaken all use Hollow every day and love it. To learn more or give it a try, visit hollow.app slash awaken.